Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is a comms prepper with a video about winlink.org's RMS Express radio email software, or RMS Express. Uh, I have a screenshot of the program here. Uh, this is a program that I recommend every amateur radio operator have installed on their computers, even if you don't own a radio yet. There's a lot of functionality in this, and it's a, it's a really neat application, so I thought I'd do a video about it. Why RMS Express? Well, it supports radio email. It can support point-to-point -point file transfers. You can use it with high-frequency radios or very high and ultra-high frequency radios. And if you don't have a radio, there's a Telnet Internet option that allows you to use the program with your radio call sign to send and receive email with your ham radio call sign at the winlink.org system. So here's a typical RMS Express amateur radio station with all the bells and whistles purchased. You have your computer, and that's talking to a TNC packet and Pactor modem, um, which is connected to an HF radio and a VHF UHF radio. And then you actually have your PC linked to the Internet. So there's three options for you to communicate with the world with RMS Express. But not everybody can afford all this stuff, or you're building your station as you go along, because it takes a lot of money to get to this point. You can use this program now with just the Internet feature, the Telnet feature. And this is what I recommend anybody who has an amateur radio license do. It's download this program, get registered in the system, have the program up and running, get familiar with the functionality, and as you add capacity and capability to your amateur radio station, you can take advantage of the other features that the program offers, such as VHF, UHF packet radio or HF Pactor radio to send and receive email over radio or transfer files between two stations. To get the program, it doesn't cost any money. You go to www.winlink.org, and I will put a link down below, and there's a tab that says software and then a pull down for user software. Go ahead and click on that and you're going to get a new page. You want to scroll down a little bit till you see the RMS Express icon and there's some text and at the bottom of the explanation of RMS Express you see a link for a WinLink FTP site. And go ahead and click on that and it'll take you to an index of the types of programs WinLink.org offers and you'll see a folder for user programs. Double click on that and then a new window will open up and you'll see in the folder RMS underscore Express underscore setup and then the version number. Go ahead and click on that and it's a self extracting zip file. I'm not going to go through installing the program, just do the default yes type things. And when it's all done, you'll have this icon RMS Express on your desktop. When you execute the program for the first time, a setup screen is going to come up and it's going to ask you for your amateur radio call sign. Now, you can't put a fake call sign in here. You have to be a licensed radio operator and have a valid amateur radio call sign. So if you're not a ham, you, you can't do this. Uh, but it's going to ask you for your call sign and your grid square location. And you may or may not know your grid square location. So I'll put another link down below to this website, dxzone.com. And they have a little application that works with Google Earth. And you click on where you live, and it will give you a six-digit alphanumeric grid square locator. So the grid square, what is it? It's your location. Uh, here's where you find it. And why you need it, you don't. But the program calls for it. And you don't have to be accurate within plus or minus 10 feet of your house. You can click on your county, and it will give you a grid square, and you can put that in the program. So once you have the call sign and the grid square in, go ahead and click the Update button and you'll come up with this screen. This is how the program will open. And in the left hand corner I blacked it out where my call sign was. Your call sign will appear there. But it's not registered in the system yet. You have to connect. The first connection you do will register your call sign in the winlink.org system. Create your email address and create your account. And again this is free of charge. And like I said there's lots of features in this RMS Express application and in the box on the right, you see Telnet, WinLink 2000, Packet, Pactor, Robust, WinMore, and then even below that, uh, 
the same features but P2P which is peer-to-peer -peer, and I'll discuss that later so what you want to do is open a session and select Telnet and then click open session and you're going to get a Telnet session that opens up and when you hit the start button your computer is going to go out through the internet because you don't have a radio set up yet and it's going to log you into the system it's going to see it's a new call sign so it's going to create that email address for you it's going to create that account for you and it's going to disconnect because of course you don't have any email waiting for you because it's a new account now you're ready to go back to RMS Express and hit message new and then you get a, an email box and you can put your email address in where you want to send it and here I put a subject first email sent with fresh RMS Express installation typed in some text and you have some radio buttons here winlink message or peer-to-peer -peer message so we're gonna send this as a winlink message meaning we're gonna connect telnet to the internet to winlink.org's system and pass this email to them and they're gonna process it onto the internet for us so when you hit post to outbox then it comes back to the default program and you will see in your outbox there's a message waiting to go and it even gives you a little uh, read option down below so you can see what you have and then I have two red arrows here where you will see slash slash WL2K now this is something I'm going to discuss in a bit but the program inserted this automatically for you and I'll explain later why so once this is set up, you go ahead and open another Telnet session, press start, and it connects to the system and processes down as the computers talk to each other. And you can see where it's sending that email and tells you when the email is sent, and that means the email is gone. So I had sent that email to my Gmail account associated with my YouTube page, and there it is. There's the email. I received it from my call sign at winlink.org to my comms prepper account associated with my YouTube channel. There's the email. I can actually hit reply and send an email back, which is what I did for this exercise. But I inserted this slash slash WL2K in the subject line before I hit the send button. And again, I'm going to explain why they do this. And I hit send. I went back to my RMS program, initiated another telnet session I hit start it went out and connected to the system and saw that there was a message there waiting from the comms prepper it received it and it posted it in the inbox and there's the message on the RMS Express application so that gives you a second email account associated with your ham radio license and if you have packet or pack tour you can actually do this over the radio which is a really nice feature Doran, if you have a storm or a grid down situation and you want to send out email and you don't have internet, if you have your computer working and your ham radio working, you can still send email. And you can open that email once it hits the inbox and you have the same functionality as you will with Outlook. You can print reply, reply to all, acknowledge receipt for, delete it. There it is all right there. So I said I would discuss this slash slash WL2K thing that's put in the subject line. Because a lot of this email moves over radio frequencies, the designers of winlink.org or winlink2000 didn't want the system getting jammed up with spam, advertisements, junk mail. So they created a system-wide rule that said any email coming in or out of the winlink2000 system that does not have slash slash WL2K at the beginning of the subject line will be rejected and deleted automatically. So if you're using this as part of your communications plan or your preps, you want to make sure that anybody who's sending you a message or anybody you're sending a message to has this slash slash WL2K in the subject line to get through the system. And you want this because if you're pulling email down over your radio, you don't want to overheat it and wear it out pulling in junk mail, you know, ads from all these different companies that you might order from because they won't put this in there. So only emails that are specifically addressed to you for a purpose that have this will get down and through your radio channel to your station. And I have a sample down here below. Slash slash WL2K, storm was bad but we're okay. And that's kind of what your subject line you want it to look like to be able to get processed through this system. The RMS Express program automatically adds this to the email subject line for you when you hit post to the outbox. And that's why in the example earlier in the video 
I said I would come back to this later. We didn't type that in. It put it in there for us. So why do I recommend this? As, aside from the Telnet feature, which is, I think is really neat if you don't have a radio, there's all sorts of other options with this program. And I have some pictures here of some typical radio modems, or what they call TNCs, or terminal node controllers. And this is a, an interface between your radio station and your computer. And they range in price from $1,600, but I think you can get them down as, as cheap as $80. And there's all sorts of companies out there. But whether you have only internet or a VHF or UHF radio or even have HF, there's an option out there for you. The, I think the best part of this program is the peer-to-peer -peer program. So you're not limited to using WinLink 2000's network. You can actually go between two ham radio stations. If you have a buddy across town or across the county that you want to send traffic back and forth to, you don't have to go through WinLink.org system. You can go to peer-to-peer go to a, an amateur radio frequency with your proper license and transfer files back and forth between your stations in a peer-to-peer -peer configuration. Here's a typical WinLink 2000 block diagram of how the system works. Your station's in the lower left-hand corner. You transmit with your modem, HF or VHF or UHF, to an RMS gateway station. The gateway station is connected to the internet and it will file your traffic for you into the internet and will receive traffic for you addressed to your station from the internet. So this is how that works. You connect, they go to the internet, get your, send your email out, pull your email in and pass it back to your station. And here's the benefit of this. Here's a map that you can find at winlink.org. Each one of these green teardrops here represents an active VHF or UHF packet RMS gateway station in the winlink.org system. So if you lose internet or telephone in your house because of a tornado, a hurricane, a thunderstorm, an ice storm, and you live near one of these RMS stations or an RMS station that's outside of the impacted area, you can fire up your ham radio, connect to one of these stations, and send and receive email. If you have shortwave or high frequency radio then the world opens up to you because those radios can talk across the country and around the world so these RMS gateway stations aren't limited to the United States they have in Europe Central and South America and Africa and in Asia and again when I took this screenshot these green dots represent active HF RMS state RMS gateway stations that you can con can connect to I just mentioned the peer-to-peer -peer network, and I do like this feature. And this allows two amateur radio operators who can have normal voice communication between their stations. Well, they can go digital with RMS Express and trans transmit text messages back and forth to each other or attachments or files between their two stations. And I think this is a really neat feature. First of all, you get 100% accuracy of your messages. This system has what they call forward error correction, so it's packet, it's 100% corrected, and when that gets there, it's just what you sent out when, when you sent it out. Also, data transmissions add a measure of privacy for monitoring. Now, I have to say, encryption is not permitted in the amateur radio service, but if you have somebody out there with a scanner monitoring your traffic, they're only going to hear data bursts with this and unless they have made the investment in buying their own modem and monitoring your link and knowing who's sending to who they're not going to get readily access to your communication so it provides a measure of privacy but legally again no encryption in the amateur radio service and it improves efficiency there's greater efficiency with this system I can transmit with data a full page of text much faster than anybody can read it over the air so that's a great benefit of the peer-to-peer -peer capability of this system. So, in summary, anybody who has an amateur radio license, I highly recommend you go out and download winlinks.org, RMS Express, even if you don't have a radio, go ahead and get set up, create your account, have your email address established, and as you expand your amateur radio station and your capability, you can start enabling more features that this program offers. But it's an excellent option for people looking to come up with a communications plan uh, for emergency preparedness. 
Because having a ham radio and talking to another ham radio operator is not the same thing as having a ham radio and being able to send an email to your grandmother or your parents someplace on the other side of the country who does not have an amateur radio. And with this program, once you get your radios configured, you can use your ham radio to send messages to people who don't have ham radios or ham radio licenses because the system gives you access to the internet through your amateur radio station. And as always, Thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper.